Hirohiko Araki, the man behind the series we all know and love, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. But what did he do before the series that brought him to fame? With the beginning of 2017, the 30th anniversary of Jojo, I thought I would go back and go over each of Araki's works before Jojo. Hello everyone, this is RPG Monger, and today I will bring you the final episode of this little series of mine. Though enough messing around, let's get right on to the main event. Poker Under Arms, Araki's first manga is, unsurprisingly, a one-shot, and quite the short one at that. So here's a little rundown of the story. We start out with the classic storytelling technique of the narrator being an older version of one of the protagonists. Though then the story opens in, surprisingly enough, a western setting, something that Araki does not do again until his seventh part of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Our main character is about as cocky as it gets, with someone always trying to kill him for his bounty. Pretty straightforward if you ask me. Not to mention, as the manga puts it, he doesn't know the meaning of the word lose. I feel some foreshadowing coming along if you ask me. Though now in the saloon, we meet our second protagonist, a man playing poker with the locals who... Wait just a minute. I'm seeing some... striking resemblances to a certain wagon here. But anyways, now with our cocky protagonist and our speedy protagonist playing poker, things begin to get heated. You can see Araki forming his early style of having dramatic scenes being commentated by other characters, like for example in this case the two people that were playing poker before. So then after clashing with their similar personalities, Mr. Totally Not Speedwagon wins, and an old man walks by noticing that the human form of cockiness was losing and I've just gotta say, I did not notice this until now but this character is just straight up Dario Brando. Like I'm not going insane here right, he really does doesn't he? So then they begin playing a special kind of poker, you guessed it, armed poker, where whoever loses has to give up their gun, directly leading to them being killed by the people after their bounty. So now at the climax of the story, after tricking each other and coming to a tie, they both raise their guns, completely distracted and not noticing that the old man was actually throwing a Molotov cocktail at them. I don't know about you, but that shit ramped up fast. So there you have it, the story just ends right there with not Dario Brando being the narrator in the end, becoming rich off of both of the poker player's bounties. As Araki's first manga, compared to all the others he did before Jojo, you can clearly tell the kinds of storytelling traits he kept using. Like, it's so surprising that even from the very beginning, he would have those intense scenes with onlookers all around in shock. If it reminds me of anything, I'd have to say a lot of the fights in parts 1 and 2 of Jojo really do this, one to an even greater extent. Like for example, the final fight with Dio in part 1 with Speedwagon saying everything that Jonathan did, you get me? Also, a little fact for you all, although it did not win, Araki entered this manga into the Tezuka Awards, an event that has head started a lot of mangakas, and Poker Under Arms was the runner up. Araki's is truly a tale of not giving up, with none of his manga before Jojo really ever finding that sweet spot of success. Well, maybe Bao did, since it got its own OVA. That's just about all I can say about Poker Under Arms, but fear not, the video is not over yet. Now, as this is the last episode of the series, having covered all of the manga that Araki made before Jojo, let's just compare them all and see what eventually made it into Jojo. The growth is really fascinating. With his first two manga, which, funnily enough, were both one-shots as you all know, I feel Araki really developed his sense of tension and drama, something that to this day he uses and in my opinion has led to some of the most tense scenes in any manga that I've ever read. Where it will get to the point where I am just skimming pages just to see what happens. It's a bad habit I know, but come on. Those final battles in Jojo are some of the most intense things that I've read or watched, aside from a couple other things. Though now, let's compare the art styles because as we all know, Araki's art style never stays the same for too long. Even now in Jojolian, the 8th part of Jojo, his art style has changed since he began the part. So with Poker Under Arms and Say Hi to Virginia, the art styles are relatively the same with more rounded faces and those signature Araki eyebrows. Cool Shock BT changes slightly with things becoming a bit more detailed with more defined facial features, though it's at Gorgeous Irene where things start changing drastically with characters becoming much more detailed and buff. And then we get to Bao where things really start finalizing with characters having much sharper faces unlike the earlier rounded ones, and the art style has pretty much become what we see in Phantom Blood. Though for any of you experts on Araki out there, you may be wondering, if this is the last episode of Araki before Jojo, aren't you forgetting a manga you fucking idiot? And to that, I'd say, you're right. There is one more one-shot that Araki made after Poker Under Arms. That manga is called Outlaw Man, and I cannot for the life of me find it anywhere. 
though inferring from the one picture of the title page that exists that I found and its description, it's apparently another western story like Poker Under Arms, which begs the question, maybe starting out, Araki wanted to make western themed manga, but it just didn't work out, though funnily enough, he ended up getting his wish much much later. Now the final comparison I'll make with Araki's early manga is this. How did his storytelling and writing develop? Quite nicely, actually. With every manga that Araki made, I felt that he's just kept pushing more and more intense scenes, eventually getting pretty violent and gory with Bao and Gorgeous Irene, unlike the more innocent manga he made prior. Oh, and a huge development that Araki didn't focus on in his earliest manga were fights, apparently, something that more or less is the driving force behind Jojo, among other things. To think that Araki did not start out using fights, but instead began later is really shocking. This year, we are all celebrating 30 years of Jojo, a monumental achievement for sure, but an even more monumental achievement is that Araki has been making manga for 36 years. 36! Talk about being committed to your passion. So here's to Hirohiko Araki, a mangaka that without a doubt will go down as one of the best. Here's to many, many more years. Oh, and a quick note before my outro. I realized me while making these videos, Araki made some other small manga meanwhile making Jojo. So you know what, I may even cover those later this year, who knows. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, do subscribe, and today's cool thing of the day is, of course, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Like, what did you expect? As one of my favorite anime and manga, only Araki could have made it what it is today, for sure. So that being said, I'm the RPG Monger, and don't forget that each and every one of you are fantastic.